Last but not least, let's talk a little bit about IFRS. Learning Objective 3-8, e, understand and explain differences in consolidation rules under US GAAP and IFRS. Although rules under IFRS for consolidation are very similar to US GAAP, there are some key differences that you should be aware of. And the reason why is because over time, the FASB has managed to converge its consolidation rules with IFRS, and they're fundamentally similar. Um, that said, VIEs and SPEs are a little more different because the financing activities in the United States versus Europe and around the world are different. So under ASC, there are two consolidation models. First, the variable interest entity model. And then if that doesn't apply, if you don't have a variable interest entity, then you're subject to the voting interest model. And under the variable interest entity model, a reporting entity has a controlling financial interest if it has the power to direct the activities, most significantly economic performance, and the obligation to absorb losses or profits to receive benefits that could be significant to the VIE. So first thing you would do under US GAAP is you would check to see if there's a VIE. If there's not a VIE, then you would go directly for the voting interest, which is what we've been talking. That voting interest would exist if you have more than half of the voting shares. IFRS is just focused on control and puts less emphasis on VIEs. So an investor controls an investee when it exposed to has rights to variable returns from its involvement with the investee, ability to affect those returns through its power over the investee. This notion includes the three following items, power over the investee, exposure of rights to variable returns from its involvement with the investee, and the ability to exercise its power over the investee to affect the amount of the investor's returns. So IFRS is an essentially integrated the two models into a single model which focuses on power, exposure to variable returns, and um, the power to affect the amount of returns. And really, I believe that eventually the FASB will go to an IFRS type of model. I don't, God knows how long it's going to take. The concept of de facto control doesn't exist in GAAP, but we have the idea of effective control. In IFRS, you have what's called de facto control. The existence of situations in which a parent company may have control over another entity, despite holding less than 50%, lacking legal or contractual rights that permit the entity to control the investee's voting power or board. So what the IFRS really wants you to do here is it wants you to look at the substance, and if you have something called de facto control, then you need to consolidate. If not, And the U.S. GAAP does not consider that. By U.S. GAAP, under the VIE model, potential voting rights may enter into the determination of whether it's a VIE, which party is the primary beneficiary. That would be where voting rights are out of proportion with the shares. And IFRS says potential voting rights are considered only if substantive. And um, they give the holder the ability to direct relevant activities. Investor with potential voting rights might have power over an investee, even if the rights are not currently exercisable. So that's a little bit about the difference. It's primarily in how the VIEs are accounted for. In substance, it all comes out the same because um, you would most 90% of the time, 95% of the time, you're gonna go with percentage of ownership of shares.